We know that uh, exposure to social media, and, and to, more precisely, expo exposure to screen time, mm. but not all screen time, but exposure to screen time and, and social media, we know that it tends to encourage um, depression, anxiety, suicide, and so on. Mm. Some numbers. Mm. Um, anxiety, anxiety among teens increased by 20% since 2007. 17% mm. um, uh, of all teens with anxiety are today with severe anxiety, life-threatening anxiety. 17% compared to three uh, about 10 years ago. Um, we know that screen time decreases happiness, decreases life satisfaction. Everything I'm mentioning has a study attached to it or studies mm -hmm. attached to it. So it decreases happiness, life satisfaction and decreases self-esteem. Mm -hmm. We know that. We know that it increases, enhances anxiety and depression. The Royal Society of Public Health published a study in June this year, June 2018, which found out that 63% 63, 63 of all Instagram users are, are uh, unhappy. Now, we don't know whether unhappy people gravitate to Instagram mm. or whether Instagram made them unhappy. Yeah, yeah. But since we have similar statistics for other social media, mm. it would stand to reason that it's the platform that made them ha unhappy, yeah. not the other way. We know that anxiety and depression among the young, as, uh, young uh, between 15 and 24, mm -hmm. increased by 70% over the last uh, uh, 30 years. That's a huge... It's, it's double, mm -hmm. simply double. And we know that since 2010, uh, teen suicide uh, climbed by 31%. Mm -hmm. So teen suicide is rampant. And today it is the first time in human history that the leading cause of death among teens up to the age of 24 is suicide, mm. not any disease or not even accidents. It used to be accidents. Mm. Uh, today it's suicide. That's a leading cause of death. And uh, this is intimately connected to social media. So it raises the question, why, why is that? Mm. Well, I mentioned before that social media is, is a conditioning tool, not an addictive tool, but a conditioning tool, and that it uses um, a relative positioning. Mm -hmm. But what are the emotions that are attached to relative positioning? Well, the first one is envy, of course. So social media are constructed around envy, mm -hmm. pathological envy. They are purveyors of pathological envy and amplifiers of pathological envy. And they quantify via various ranking uh, algorithms. They quantify mm -hmm. envy with likes, with retweets. With... So they quantify envy and then they leverage envy to, to motivate you. In other words, they use envy to cause you to adopt some course of action. Mm -hmm. So they weaponize envy. They, uh, but not only, not only envy, but I think um, even more so aggression. Of course, pathological envy is a form of aggression. People confuse, people confuse jealousy with envy. And here's the difference. Jealousy is when I look at you and I say, I want to be Richard Grennan. So I will study hard, I will buy the right glasses, and, and so on. I will mm -hmm. develop muscles. Mm -hmm. So it will motivate me to positive action. Mm -hmm. uh, jealousy is constructive. Mm -hmm. it, it motivates me to act, mm -hmm. but in a positive way, to emulate you. Nice. Pathological envy means that I regard you as a source of frustration, mm -hmm. that I can't be like you. Yeah. So I would seek to destroy you, yes. or to make you me. Okay. Um, for instance, by forcing you to wear white shirts which you will never do. <laughs> so <laughs> pathological envy is a form of aggression. Okay. And when we look at social media, we see that all social media mm -hmm. encourage aggression via their algorithms and via the way they foster interactions. So they encourage, for example, peer aggression. Mm -hmm. They encourage bullying, they encourage mobbing, gang stalking, they encourage black humor, they encourage brutal, brutal honesty. Mm -hmm and so on and so forth. You could say, what do you mean encourage? It's an empty space. Mm. I mean, you can put, in this empty space, you can put brutal honesty, mm -hmm. or you can put compassion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like they are forcing you, it's your choice yeah. how to abuse this empty blank space. Well, of course it's not true. Yeah. It's not true because the, uh, these platforms have been designed to, to condition, mm. or as, as the founders and constructors of this platform now are attesting, mm. they were conditioned to, to become addictive. Mm -hmm. But it's wrong. It's not addiction. Never mind. Yeah. We know what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. These platforms encourage repeat use. Mm -hmm. 
repeat compulsive use. Mm -hmm. And now we know from psychology that only these kind of emotions, aggression, envy, hatred, only these kind of emotions encourage repeated use. Nice. And repeat. So there is no way that they have designed these platforms without being aware that they must leverage these emotions to create addiction. You're saying that in order to guarantee that there would be eyeballs on the screen for longer and more eyeballs on the screen, they've deliberately fostered negative emotions in that space. Yes. Anger. There was no other way. Envy. Yes. Resentment. Yes. And they cannot come out and say, you're wrong. Yeah. We similarly encourage love because all psychological studies show that love does not motivate, it does not create or motivate repeat usage, repeat action, repeat, does not foster addiction. No. We have forms of love which are addictive, mm. but then we are talking stalking, erotomaniac stalking, yes. um, infatuation. Yes. These are pathological states. Mm -hmm. uh, so, pathologies. These platforms were designed with pathology in mind. Mm. It's not what I am saying. Some of the founders of Facebook mm. and, and uh, the main engineer of Facebook mm -hmm. in the first few years yes. are now, have now gone public and admitted mm -hmm. that they have built addiction into the platform. Mm. And how do you do that? The only way to build addiction into the platform is to foster, engender and enhance exactly these emotions. Right. 